on age 732, Vegeta was born. But something was unusual about him. His hair was red instead of black, as well as his eyes. King Vegeta, being confident he's an elite, goes and puts him along with the rest of the elites. However, he's quite disappointed when he sees that Vegeta doesn't exert any energy at all. At best, it shows up as unrecognizable. Seeing that, the king was quite disappointed and angry he made a child looking almost exactly like him but won't be able to become the king. Or so he thinks. He goes and investigates the fact that his son has red hair and after a while he finds an answer from the Frieza Force, how the red hair and eyes indicate a Super Saiyan God has appeared. King Vegeta has never been more prideful in his son, but then questions the lack of his son's power level. But that question remained unanswered. Zarbon eventually caught up to it all and told Frieza that King Vegeta is fathering a Super Saiyan God and how they could pose a serious threat in the future. Frieza agrees, but then again, he'd like to see where this unfolds and if he can get the Prince Vegeta to be at his disposal. Five years have passed and the Saiyans are just as loyal as ever, but they're being constantly watched by Frieza. Prince Vegeta, after conquering a planet, sees what he's been doing all his life and knows that if he can't find any Saiyans, he will go nuts. He gets back to the ship and gets called in by Frieza, saying he has to talk to him. He gets there and Frieza breaks the silence, saying that since he's a very loyal soldier, he will become a Frieza Force elite soldier once he grows up. Vegeta was happy, but in the back of his head, he knew something wasn't right, but he moved on regardless. That was about the right time for Kakarot to be born, and was just as casual as a low class baby, as always and was destined to be sent to some backward planet. Frieza then lets Vegeta on a mission with some other Saiyan elites, while he takes care of their planet by, well, destroying it. Before the disaster, Bardock sends Kakarot to Earth in a pod. Frieza prepares the blast and throws it at planet Vegeta, destroying it. Vegeta was informed about a planet getting destroyed. He thinks through it and realizes what Frieza meant by him becoming his right side man and the purpose of sending them away so suddenly. Vegeta then cracks his counter and tells the others to do the same, saying they're done with Frieza and that they won't work for the person that just annihilated their planet. They get rid of all non Saiyan soldiers and then mutilate some dead people similarish to them and change their armor so they look like deceased selves. With that, they go low-key. All the while, Frieza thinks they died while conquering. He believes that they have escaped, so he goes to investigate. He sends a bunch of soldiers to the area and they report back to Frieza, saying the whole squad has been mutilated as they can recognize Vegeta and Nappa along with the other soldier. Frieza couldn't believe it, but says it doesn't really matter since they were mere monkeys. Kakra is renamed to Goku on Earth and the franchise takes a normal turn, but this time the three Saiyans are jumping from planet to planet to eat, train and humiliate the residents of that specific planet they were in. All that goes the same up until Raditz Saga. It all unfolds pretty much the same way. Piccolo briefly meets Raditz and gets one shot. Raditz then heads to Kame House where Goku is with his friends and his 5 year old son Gohan. Raditz arrives and tries to bargain with Goku, but no one really listens, so Kakarot takes his nephew Gohan and Goku is pinned down to the ground. Raditz says if he wants his son back, he will join him and destroy this planet. After Raditz leaves with Gohan, Piccolo arrives and asks of Goku to go take down Raditz. Goku agrees and, well, everyone else goes along. This time, they start thinking of a plan to defeat him as soon as possible and Krillin recommends grabbing his tail, thinking that he probably didn't train the tail like Goku did in his childhood, so he goes for it. Upon arrival, Raditz is already waiting there and sees a whole squad there, knowing they're not going down without a fight, so they just begin fighting and it's clear Raditz is plenty stronger. But eventually, Goku manages to grab Raditz's tail from behind instead of holding him in place. That was a great mistake however when Goku released his tension on Raditz's tail as Piccolo started charging a Makakosapo. Once done, he fired it. 
He pierced through Raditz and Goku, even though it was purely unintentional. But Piccolo kind of enjoyed looking at Goku fading away from reality. Krillin then starts talking about how they can bring him back with the Dragon Balls. But they then hear the scouter babbling on something to Raditz. But they get no response. Gohan is rescued by Piccolo and then taken away. Because he fears that there are more of them coming to Earth. He was right as Krillin took the scouter and spoke to Nappa. Nappa said that since they spewed out the Dragon Ball part of the story. They are going to come very soon. Which was kind of a scare for them. They then went to the lookout and asked Okami to train them, as Goku will be training on King Kai's world until he's revived. But Goku told him not to as there is a myth about King Kai and his training. So he went for it after being told about more Saiyans coming to Earth. While on King Kai's planet, Goku was told about Vegeta and how he is the Prince of Saiyans and also possesses something called God Key. So he won't be able to sense him because of that. After a year, the two Saiyans arrive and start searching for Kakara now that they've lost Raditz. They don't destroy much this time, but the Z fighters are well prepared. Vegeta and Nappa just gaze at the fighters and notice Gohan. They realize he is a half Saiyan and how they can make use of the Saiyan hybrid, but they're here to pick up Goku. Goku arrives and prepares to fight him. Vegeta tells Nappa to go fight Goku and Nappa fails miserably. However, he doesn't get killed because his spine isn't broken like in the original. Vegeta then steps up, knowing he can't be surpassed as he unleashes his fire-like aura. Goku says he was told the Saiyans were ruthless, but he sees he was off a little bit. Vegeta confirms it, then asks that he just like to test Goku's strength, and Goku says that he's quite buffed up since the fight with Raditz and himself. Vegeta respects the fact Goku is honest, as he goes in and kicks Goku in the chest, temporarily disabling him from doing anything, as Vegeta gives him a flurry of punches. Goku sees that Vegeta can also control his power, and it's way higher than him and Nappa combined, doubting if a times 10 Kawa Ken burst could do anything to that beast, but tries it anyways as Goku unleashes a Kawa Ken times 10 momentarily, landing a punch on Vegeta. Now, Goku is seemingly making his mark, but it's not enough as Vegeta powers up even further. Vegeta then stops and says that he can see why he could beat Nappa so easily and offers him a proposition to leave this place as he has something way better in mind. Goku thinks it's a diversion but Vegeta says that there is a creature a thousand times more stronger and he's the cum stain that wiped their people from existence. With such talented fighters such as himself and Goku He's sure they can win. Goku accepts the proposal, but if he tries anything, he will go and stop him forcefully. With that, they've come to an agreement to battle Frieza together and defeat him once and for all. On Earth, Vegeta realizes that Frieza went to Namek to search for wish orbs. Piccolo joins in on a thing too. Vegeta and Nappa prepare their pots, but before that happens, Mr. Briefs has them covered. They wait for the machine and Boma gets around with Vegeta much earlier. The new ship with a gravity chamber so they can train all together while Boma, Krillin, Piccolo and Gohan are already on Namek. With all that, they went there. On Namek, Piccolo is surprised that this is his home planet. They sense Frieza almost immediately but waited out a little more. They decide to grab at least one Dragon Ball before they actually figure out what he's here for. After a while of hiding, they overhear a conversation in one of the villages how Frieza plans to become immortal so they take 3 out of 7 Dragon Balls and hide them in a place where no one's going to look. Piccolo then says that's enough hiding and that they should go beat him up once and for all. But he's stopped by Krillin who says that it's a death wish, as said from Vegeta. Piccolo realizes just what he said and goes along with it. All the Saiyans are training in their own little ship in space. Goku was on Kyle's planet, so he's used to planet Vegeta gravity. So they start with 20 times normal gravity and bump it up gradually. Vegeta doesn't get that much of a boost because he's already buffed, but his power is Kai rocking it at this point already. Goku slowly starts getting the feel of God energy as he spends more and more time with Vegeta. 
and before they know it, now buffed to the core, they manage to reach Namek quite fast. Upon their arrival, they get their first taste of an alien world after so long. They start searching for the Dragon Balls to take them away from Frieza first, but they sense something strong coming to the planet. Vegeta being scared, he wonders if that might be Frieza. He turns out to be right as Frieza is just roaming around in his little pod. Everyone decides to hide their key and go in one of the houses as to prevent being seen. Frieza is now on the planet and guess where he goes? Exactly, the very same village Vegeta, Goku and the rest of the gang are in. Namekians prepare for what's awaiting and with that, Frieza arrives. The tyrant then questions the Namekians about the Dragon Balls and if they have one, to give it kindly to him if they know what's good for them. They object, of course. So Frieza attempts to blast the village away, and as he shoots the blast, it stops. All of a sudden, the blast explodes, and once the dust settles, we see Goku and Vegeta guarding the Namekians. Vegeta then powers up and waits for Frieza to attack. And boy does Frieza attack. Goku and the others watch as Vegeta takes on Frieza. After throwing fists for a bit, they come to a standstill. Vegeta tells Frieza how he was indeed born special, and how he is a Saiyan God, only told from legends, and how he's never broken a sweat with Kaioken x 20 Goku and Nappa teaming up on him during training, saying he will obliterate that cum stain looking on his face. Vegeta then comes in rushing and kicking Frieza in the chin, telling him to pray to whatever god he believes in as he will kill him for all those years of serving him, thinking he did good for the universe. Frieza, being offended of course, goes and starts transforming. Frieza keeps on transforming as he goes to the second form and third form, actually impressing Vegeta. But Frieza keeps on going, reaching his final form. With that, they begin a new battle. Frieza, thinking he's unbeatable, he tries beating Vegeta's ass, but Vegeta is just standing there taking a beating and saying how he's a deity, a Saiyan God, and how Frieza should actually listen. Vegeta stays the way he is and waits on Frieza to attack again, and he does, trying to make a dent on the Saiyan Prince. After a short and eventless skirmish, Frieza then goes completely nuts, aims at the Saiyans and fires a big ass blast at them. Vegeta is calm and just gets in front of the blast like he did for the village. But this time, he fires a very thick beam, going right through the blast, splitting it and firing through it. It makes its way to Frieza. Frieza has literally no time to dodge, so he gets hit and gets split in half, leaving only the legs, a small bit of torso and the head. Frieza is shocked that he was defeated by the one he feared the most, that being Vegeta. Vegeta then flies up to him and points his hand to Frieza as he's fired one last blast, completely disintegrating the tyrant. All the Dragon Balls are giving back. With that, they find their inner peace at the very last, and the Namekian villagers thank the Saiyans, and the Saiyans go back to Earth. They have a safe trip back to Earth, and once they arrive, they go and celebrate it. Vegeta noticed how he's changed quite a lot from the time he ditched the Frieza Force up until now, because he didn't kill as often or at all sometimes. He knows his life has taken a good turn and, well, ended up on Earth, in a permanent home from now on, and also hooks up with Bulma. One day, they all sense a massive key arriving just in the outskirts, and they can recognize it quite easily as it's similar to Frieza's. Vegeta comes to the conclusion that it's possible Frieza's dad, and that he wouldn't mind killing the dad too to complete the mission. On the way there, Vegeta gets a weird sensation. Like he's sensing someone's energy, but it's near King Cold and is intensifying by every second. To top it all off, it feels just like his own key. They arrive there and they see King Cold obviously and a pink haired stranger destroying Cold. Once Cold was gone, the kid went from pink hair to purple hair and looked on towards our Z fighters. He descends to them and asks to speak to Goku and Goku obliges. Once alone, he tells Goku his name is Trunks and that he is from the future, how Bulma and Vegeta are his parents, and then getting to the real point how that he will die from a heart virus that has no cure in the present before the battle. 
When Goku asks what battle, Trunks tells him everything about the androids. Goku is bummed he doesn't get to take a crack at him. Future Trunks is amazed that Goku wants to stand up to the challenge and that his mother was right about him. Future Trunks gives him the heart medicine and says he believes in Goku because he has to learn to tap into God Key in these 3 years. Trunks tells Goku to keep it his darkest of secrets or he might not be conceived. With that, Trunks leaves just like he came. Goku comes back to the group and the guys question him. Goku is quite reluctant about everything, but Piccolo spills the beans and tells everyone everything that's about to happen. So they start training for the next 3 years. 3 years pass and they're ready for the androids. They get to the outskirts and wait. We see Bulma with a child. Goku accidentally spills out the name and the father, but goes relatively unnoticed. But Bulma is just surprised that he knows and asks how does he know. Goku brushes it off and waits alongside Bulma. The androids arrive so Goku gives Bulma the sensus and the Z fighters then depart into the city to search for the androids. They manage to find 19 and 20 and tell them to go in the outskirts to fight. The androids agree to the terms and then depart. During a flight to the outskirts, Vegeta notices Goku being slightly out of breath and asks him if he's good. Goku just says he is and continues flying. Upon arrival, Goku, being confident in his abilities, takes them both on, going into Super Saiyan he acquired during those 3 years and takes on Android 19 first, beating him relatively easily and quickly, but once the time came for 20 to die, 20 is nowhere to be seen, as well as Vegeta. Suddenly Goku falls down and grabs his chest in pain. Yamcha, now healed, goes and takes him away while they search for 20. Goku is in his room with Yamcha, Yajirobe and Chi Chi panicking and crying as to what's going on and Yamcha explains that he just collapsed, drank a small bottle of something and went out like a dead light bulb. Meanwhile, Vegeta is trying to sense the androids but fails to do so. However, after a bit of searching, Krillin notifies everyone how he found Jiro's lab. At the same time, Future Trunks arrives and sees the Z fighters, letting the nostalgia take over for a bit before descending. Everyone looks at Trunks, then Vegeta. Trunks sees their confusion but chooses not to spoil the beans. However, Vegeta already realized it's his son. During all the babble, the door is open to reveal the new addition to the androids, Anjiro's head on the ground. The new androids can't seem to find Goku so they just walk past our Z fighters and depart on their merry way. Trunks then recommends that they should find those androids. Bulma has wandered off on her own and finds an incubator containing the embryo. Trunks immediately knows this is Cell and destroys it right there. Bulma is getting annoyed on why and Trunks just stares at the wall, not saying a thing. Vegeta gets triggered and wants to find the androids, so he departs. Trunks has returned to reality and told everyone that, once his father takes care of the androids, they'll finally be at peace. They then sense something odd on an island not too far away from there, and they go to investigate. They see a time machine covered in moss and Trunks tells them how that's impossible. Once everyone asks him to elaborate, Trunks explains how this is his time machine and how someone used it, then says it's impossible as he keeps it in a capsule. They then see how something is caked from the inside. They decide to go a bit deeper with the investigation, but before that happened, they sense one of the cities getting destroyed. They rush into the city to fight a bug looking creature in front of them on a cliff. The thing introduces itself as Cell and that he's searching for the androids. But our fighters don't buy it and get straight to the point, asking if you vaporized the city just now. Cell confirms it and says that for their own good not to interfere, otherwise you will need to kill them right there. Right as Cell finished that sentence, every Saiyan present turns Super Saiyan. Meanwhile, Vegeta senses shit is going down back there while he's busy with the androids. Bulma is still near the lab, so Vegeta takes care of the androids by kicking them down unconscious, then getting them back to Bulma to seal them away again. Bulma has a plan, so she begins reenacting it. Cell begins fighting the Saiyans, but 
they can't really manage much at all as Cell is simply toying with them. So they decide to power up. Cell comments on their weak asses, but fighting isn't their option. Rather, pinpointing the location to Vegeta. Vegeta figures out and departs to the area. He arrives very fast and sees Cell standing there. Vegeta can sense Cell's power and figures why no one can get close to him. Vegeta then gets ready, transforming into his own Super Saiyan, which he calls Rose, and then begins to fight Cell. It's clear he's much better on his own, since his base is stronger than both Saiyans that were there in their own Super Saiyan forms. Cell was overwhelmed now by a long shot, simply because Vegeta increased the power by more than 10 times Cell's own limit. Cell realizes he's way outclassed and then tries to vanish. Now the Saiyans are thinking what next, but Vegeta remembers he can sense God Key, so he goes for it. Cell manages to escape, but as he's choosing his next city, Vegeta cuts him off. Cell is confused, but Vegeta still spares no one as Cell gets punched through in an instant. Thinking he saved the day, Vegeta slowly starts walking away, but Cell gets up, regenerating in an instant getting a Zenkai on the spot and then attack Vegeta. Vegeta of course blocks the attack while staring at Cell. He noticed Cell can regenerate like Namekians, so he's got no time to waste. But Cell then pushes Vegeta back, releasing a powerful and fire-like aura. Vegeta knew he screwed up, but started fighting Cell regardless. The two start battling and it's clear Cell has the upper hand as he's trashing Vegeta around. While away from Cell, Vegeta slipped something in his mouth and continued battling Cell. Cell managed to punch through Vegeta with such force that even Raditz and Nappa sensed where he came from and then rushed there. Once there, Cell was nowhere to be seen and they see Vegeta bleeding to death. So they immediately take him back to Capsule Corp while Bulma was working on reprogramming the androids. Vegeta was in a tough state and almost unconscious, not being able to move a muscle. While helping him out, Raditz noticed something green in his mouth, which Krillin said is a chewed up sensu bean. So he went and grabbed some water and washed Vegeta's mouth with it, rinsing the bean in his stomach. The bean worked and Vegeta recovered. He woke up and figured they realized he had a sensu bean in his mouth as a backup. He's got a massive Zenkai from it. But he was still quite unsure if he'll be able to take a crack at Cell again. Trunks recommends that Goku should take on Cell, but Vegeta says how he'll only get in the way. Trunks then explains further how Goku could get the same thing Vegeta has and how he could push his power higher beyond with it, just like Vegeta did. That was the perfect time for Goku to heal up from the heart virus. Goku arrived at Capsule Corp and Trunks rehearsed the plan to him. So, in a nutshell, it was up to all the Saiyans to pour their Super Saiyan power into him, creating a Super Saiyan God and then working on honing it. Goku asks how does he know of it, and Trunks says that it has been done to him, hence the Rosé form. Meanwhile, Piccolo fused with Kami and now they lost the Dragon Balls. That was a bad idea on Piccolo's end as Cell comes crashing in the Capsule Corp, destroying the area where the androids were located and absorbing them, becoming perfect. The Z fires barging and see the carnage. But Vegeta is shocked by something else. Bulma, dead on the ground, looking completely mauled by the explosion. This enrages Vegeta and Trunks so much that they power up as high as they can go, pushing their boundaries. Trunks did nothing much except boosting two or three times more. But Vegeta, he went higher than that as his aura imploded revealing an even pinkier form. Vegeta's tears evaporate from the intense aura and his power suddenly skyrockets by 20 fold. He is now a Super Saiyan Rose evolution. Since Cell was quite weak right after he absorbed the androids, Vegeta had a very good chance of defeating the Bugman. With a single gut kick, Cell spewed out both the androids. Trunks joined in on the fun as he threw Cell in the air and began mauling him down like a pest, before killing him off with a powerful wave. Vegeta and Trunks went back to base to mourn the loss of his wife, and well, mother for Trunks. 
Goku figured the training was unnecessary now, since Vegeta and Trunks dealt with him. The only concern now was a new Earth Guardian, which they saw with Dende with a simple trip to Namek. The revived Bulma and everything is back to normal. During the 7 year time skip, Goten was born and since Gohan was training most of the time, Goten would join in too to train with his older brother. Vegeta has become even more reclined towards his family due to knowing he's finally safe and has become aware that he does indeed have a wife and a kid once he exploded when Bulma died. During a meal, Gohan asks Bulma that since he's gonna fly to school, he's gonna need a, a disguise. Preferably something super hero looking since he saw a lot of bullshit go down in the city where he's gonna attend his high school. Bulma says she can make something in a couple of hours, since she does have some time to kill. Might as well do something she could actually enjoy making. Gohan is thrilled and thanks Bulma. A couple hours later, Bulma enters the room and passes Gohan the bracelet. But due to Gohan's confusion, she explains that she made the bracelet as a cloaking device for the suit. And since he's gonna land near school, might as well have a quick and well, easy change of clothes. Go on tank Bulma and continue training again. At school he meets with Videl and once he was told she's the daughter of Mr. Satan, they become friends rather easily, both being fighters of course. She tells him about her father and how her father won multiple Tenkaichi Budokais and he figured that he might have been there when Cell was around. She also mentions the next and upcoming Tenkaichi Budokai. Gohan thinks for a moment and decides to participate in it. The day of the tournament is finally there and Videl is pretty trained up. Gohan and the rest of the gang is there, patiently waiting on Goku, Vegeta and Nappa to arrive. Soon enough, they arrive. With the squad now there, the tournament is about to proceed. Krillin and Pintar fight first and you know how that goes. Then Piccolo and Shin and Shin reveals to be a Supreme Kai which surprises Piccolo and well, the rest of the team. Shin then briefly explains the reason behind his arrival. Next up are Videl and Spopovich. The reason behind Videl's appearance and not Raditz's or Nappa's is simply because of Mr. Satan. Trunks trained Videl's endurance so she's a bit more powerful but still gets kicked up by Spopovich. Next up is Gohan and Kibito and Gohan shows the Super Saiyan dude to Kibito. While people were occupied with thoughts like these, Spopovich and Yamu came and stole all his energy with the help of the Supreme Kai who paralyzed Gohan. They then left and so, the Z fighters followed at a distance. Meanwhile, Mr. Satan proposes a battle royale. Shin explains to the squad how those people are under the influence of Babidi and how he's planning to release Majin Buu. Meanwhile, Kibito, Gohan and Videl try to catch up. But Videl isn't accustomed to flying yet and so the big reveal what happened 7 years ago still happens between her and Gohan. They arrive at Babidi's ship and hide their key. They witness Yamu and Spopovich getting killed and they also witness Kibito getting killed. They then get noticed and so Krillin and Nappa get turned into stone. The rest go in. Babidi teleports rats and Piccolo across the planet so they don't interfere. First to fight are Goku and Pui Pui and Pui Pui is basically dominated like a sugar daddy dominates his ethos. Then Vegeta and Yakon, and that goes relatively same. And last but not least, Gohan and Dabora. They fight it and it's obvious Gohan is winning because he didn't quite give up on training as much as in the original. He wins over Dabora and with that, Krillin and Nappa are back to normal. They then have a conversation with Shin for a small bit. What they didn't know is that it was a decoy to start taking over Vegeta's mind. Vegeta suddenly starts writhing in pain, rolling on the ground and screaming bloody murder. Shin knows what's happening and tells Vegeta that he's a good person and how he shouldn't let Babidi control him. Vegeta knows he's good but he killed for Frieza. Shin then tells him that it wasn't what he wanted. Babidi is trying but all his might isn't enough for a Super Saiyan God. With that, Vegeta survives. Babidi then tries Goku as well, but it comes up inconclusive. After a few more minutes, Vegeta and Goku are back to normal and with that, they go to confront Babidi. But he's not there. Shin starts thanking the trio that was inside for helping him stop the release of Boo. But it's too early to celebrate just yet. 
the last bit of energy was needed to release Majin Buu. Buu sees no one but the squad in front of him are there and ask if they summon him, which they kind of confirm. Buu then starts trashing the whole place, but despite squad's best efforts to restrain him, he just can't stop. He then asks if someone likes chocolate and the trio says yes. Buu then continues on. The Saiyans ask Shin if they can try to reason with him and he says that they can't. With that, Vegeta begins reasoning with Buu despite Shin telling him not to as it would be pointless. Buu looked at Vegeta and mocked his pinkish red hair, which pissed Vegeta off a bit, but knowing if Buu attacks him, he will be able to keep up, even with his base. Vegeta then comments his entire body color the same way Buu commented his hair, and that triggered Buu a lot, as he started fuming up. Vegeta just says he did a reverse scenario and not to get pissed off by a joke. Buu then calmed down, but proceeded to go in the town to destroy it. Vegeta noticed and went straight in front of him with such speed that Buu got scared. He told him not to go into the city until they know he won't do anything. Buu got triggered by it and attacked Vegeta, but Vegeta simply caught his fist. Buu then went ahead and surprise attacked Vegeta by turning him into candy and attempting to eat him. But as Buu threw the chocolate Vegeta in his mouth, the candy pierced through Buu's throat and started emitting a fire aura. Vegeta said he's the hottest candy around here and if Buu wants to eat him, better cool him down, otherwise to turn him back to normal. Buu didn't listen, so he went to grab the fire candy. Candy fight Vegeta was way too fast for Buu, in fact he didn't even break a sweat. After a lot of trial and error, Buu went ahead and turned Vegeta back to normal. As Buu did that, Vegeta's aura exploded as Buu was slowly getting disintegrated by the intense heat he emitted. Bobbidi also got caught up in the wind and was thrown to Kibito, who gladly killed the midget wizard. Letting his key explode, he forms a yellow aura with lightning as he prepares his final flash. Vegeta tells Buu how he was told to kill him and since he's not much of a liar, he will kill him off for good as to not cause any issues in the future. The blast is fired and Buu is engulfed by it, starting to slowly disintegrate. Vegeta successfully destroyed Buu without even knowing of his healing abilities. With that, they went back to the tournament as Goku and Vegeta began what they planned, a rematch after all these years. Goku showcased his fully mastered Super Saiyan 3 while Vegeta stayed in base as he promised. He had a little bit of difficulty, but 20 times was plenty of his power to defeat a Super Saiyan 3 Goku once Goku's power started dropping. Vegeta is the winner and got his massive prize. He decides to give it to Goku since he knows his family doesn't have as much as Bulma, so Vegeta declines his prize. Goku thanks Vegeta as they have a little moment there and everything goes back to normal. It's been about 7 months after the Buu incident and everyone is just chilling. Vegeta is training his ass off along with Goku, Gohan, Nappa and Raditz. Bulma prepares them a nice meal and they carelessly eat. Meanwhile at the far end of the universe a god named Beerus has woken up, trying to remember his dream and the prophecy. Beerus can't remember the dream so after destroying a bunch of planets, he asks the oracle fish about this new foe. He gets his answer, so Beerus and Whis then head towards Earth. On Earth, Bulma and the Saiyans go to prepare everything for her birthday. On the cruiser ship, the preparations are done and they begin, with guests already arriving. The entire squad wishes Bulma happy birthday out of kindness. Vegeta and Nappa then talk for a little with Goku joining them in. Raditz and Piccolo then talk about the past and how it was all a hassle back then. All of a sudden, Supreme Kai reaches Vegeta and the Saiyans. He says that a god of destruction Beerus is coming to earth and doesn't quite know his intentions yet. Vegeta immediately remembers with Nappa nodding back, looking at Vegeta and knowing what's about to happen. Trunks then senses something and warns the others. Vegeta tells everyone to stay alert and to stay close because shit is about to go down. The energy Vegeta and Trunks are sensing is getting closer, while those with normal key can't really sense it and are just looking around. All of a sudden, they see a bright flash in front of them as they all get into a stance. They then see a purple cat and blue, tall guy standing before them. 
fueling Vegeta's and Nappa's suspicions. Beerus then speaks up, saying he's come for a Super Saiyan God. Vegeta says that's him and what business he has on Earth. He says he has been observing him, watching him grow stronger over all these years. Beerus then continues on how he dreamt of him fighting Vegeta and how this is coming out true. If he disobeys, the planet can be kissed goodbye. Vegeta has no other choice but to fight. However, Trunks tries to step in, wanting to take the place. But Vegeta knows of Beerus' power and what he can do. Vegeta then accepts the challenge for the sake of Earth. Vegeta and Beerus all ascend to the sky and they begin the fight. Vegeta first uses Super Saiyan God as his base and fights Beerus. He puts up a really good fight, but nothing near the full power Beerus wanted to see. So Vegeta goes Super Saiyan Rose and continues. With each passing blow, they went up further into the atmosphere and shared punches and kicks with each other. Vegeta wasn't fully powered up yet, but thought that Beerus has his limit and continues on fighting. Beerus then asks Vegeta whether this is his all, because he is quite impressed, but he's still restraining. Vegeta then powers up his Rosé all the way up as they reinitiate the fight. Vegeta pushes every ounce of energy he has into his punches and kicks, and Beerus is trying quite hard not to expose himself. They clash for quite a long time, and at this point, Beerus knows Vegeta isn't gonna give up that quickly. So, he unleashes even more of his power. Vegeta can hardly keep up with Beerus' constant dominance assertion, but tries his best regardless. However, all of it is quite pointless as Vegeta has one more trick up his hand. The next form he uses is his latest one, Super Saiyan Rose Evolution, as he rushes Beerus with it. Beerus has literally no time to react, as he gets punched right in the stomach. Beerus tries to catch some air, but really can't, and just collapses towards Earth, on the ground. Beerus and Whis have went back to their planet. Beerus went to sleep, while Whis was occasionally coming to get some meals with Bulma and Vegeta. Speaking of which, Vegeta even became acquainted with the Angel, and they're getting along nicely. Whis told Vegeta that he was indeed the one Beerus wanted to fight, and that it was the prophecy he had about a Saiyan God coming to take him on, and it turned out to be true as he was overwhelmed with him. Sensing real divine energy from within, Whis then says that he can train him, making Vegeta's eyebrows go up as he hears that. Vegeta knew that Whis was special and wanted to know just how special, so he asked. Whis replies that he is Beerus' attendant and master. Vegeta's jaw just drops and he then proceeds to beg Whis to train him. Seeing a big potential in the Saiyan, he decides to train him. Vegeta then tells Bulma his goodbyes as he goes with Whis. On Beerus' world, Vegeta is training hard, not letting Whis have a single break until he himself taps out. He's been on the planet for 6 months and Whis went on another one of his tours to Earth for food. However, he meets Goku and Goku asks him to be trained by him as well. Raditz overhears this and wants to go too. Whis graciously accepts. Whis, thinking that those boys might have potential, he brings them in to train with him after having a meal with Bulma of course. Raditz and Goku were fighting with each other due to Goku being an annoyance, but it was mostly eventless. On Beerus' world, Vegeta is waiting patiently while training some himself. Whis then comes and sees Raditz behind Whis, as he feigns palms. The next second you hear a second face bomb from Vegeta as Goku emerges too. Vegeta now gets the train with his fellow Saiyans and he doesn't like it at all. However, on the other end of the universe in an unknown galaxy, the now defunct Frieza Force needs their leader back and they need him fast as he's the only one who can bring fear back in this universe. They make their way to Earth and they find the Pilaf gang and they force them to summon a dragon to grant them their wish. They wish for Frieza to come back to life, and instead of coming back in a million pieces, he comes as a whole, and they leave immediately as to not get caught. Frieza then vows he will rid the universe of Saiyans once and for all, and will become a god himself in needs be. So he begins training on his own. On Earth, everyone sense an unknown power appear and disappear as quickly as he came, and are questioning themselves. Meanwhile, Vegeta and Goku both sense something coming from Earth and look at each other. So our squad began training even harder right away. It's been about a year for our Saiyans back on Beerus' planet and they have buffed up. Goku and Raditz can now both turn into Super Saiyan Blue. Having that covered, everyone is now clear to go back to their home planet 
and relax. And well, they're brought back. Whis tells them that if they need to clear the restriction during the training, that he's happy to help anytime. So they thank him and he leaves. Bulma then calls out for them as Jocko is standing next to her. He explains that Frieza will arrive in the next 30 or so minutes. And he's not gonna be alone as he will bring a shit ton of other warriors within his force and he's coming for them. Now that they know the rough time of Frieza's arrival, they need a place of the arrival. So they wait until they sense something. After a while, they sense Frieza in the outskirts of town and they rush there. They immediately see Frieza in his final form as they come to a standstill. Goku steps up and begins to fight Frieza. He's being pummeled hard as he can't even grab an edge on a tyrant. Goku catches a breather and they then reinitiate the battle and it's clear yet again that he can't go any further than the last time. So he goes Super Saiyan Blue and now he is slightly overpowering him as he's pummeling Frieza to the ground. Frieza says that he has one more form to go as he goes golden. He says he will not repeat the same mistake like on Namek. Goku is then kicked to the ground by Frieza and then continuously stepped on. Raditz sees this and transforms into Super Saiyan Blue and attacks Frieza. But he's just too powerful to battle in his current state. Trunks also loses his senses and attacks in his rosé form. And although he did leave a little bit of a mark, he didn't get anywhere either. Vegeta then calmly steps in, seeing he will defeat him again, once and for all. Vegeta then goes into Super Saiyan Rosé and punches Frieza. But Frieza isn't convinced in Vegeta's words. Vegeta then tells Frieza that he got a lot more powerful since last time they met. But then again, how it doesn't matter. Vegeta whips out his Super Saiyan Rosé too, which he learned from training with Whis. Knowing Frieza is much weaker than him, he lays a few punches on him, making him go out of his golden state. He goes in to defeat him, but Frieza is planning to take Earth away with himself if it needs be. And well, with that, Earth is gone, and well, you know what's gonna happen next. Whis uses his staff to reverse time by 3 minutes. Vegeta now has a chance to defeat Frieza. He powers up a massive Gallic gun, just like back then when he first fought Frieza, and throws it at Frieza sending him back to his hell. With that, Vegeta saves the day. Goku and Vegeta go back to training with Whis on Beerus' planet. After a while, during training, someone visits Beerus' world. They guess it's Fat Beerus and female Whis, before Champa introduced himself and his attendant. They try out their foods and when Champa realized Earth's food is truly amazing, he proposes a tournament, to which Beerus and the Saiyans agree. With that, they go to find the warriors for the tournament. Goku, Raditz, and Vegeta are already in, and appoint Piccolo and Nappa while they're at it. With that, we have the Universe 7 team ready to rumble. They go to an unnamed planet and see Champa stuffing himself. With that, they meet Kaba, a Saiyan from Universe 6. Goku and Botamo's fight starts and it's like in the original. So does Frost fight. Piccolo is up next and gets poisoned too. Jocko finds out he's poisoning his opponents and it turns out to be true. But Vegeta isn't backing away from the challenge. Vegeta jumps in and they begin, beating him just like the original. Megeta is up next and is also beaten similarly to the original. Vegeta and Kaba step up and the teacher-student bond happens. Kaba turns into a Super Saiyan and all that and Vegeta beats him with a Super Saiyan Rosé. Universe 6 is down to only one warrior and that is Hit. Hit uses time skip to mess with Vegeta. Vegeta turns Rosé, but to no avail. Vegeta then goes Super Saiyan Rosé too, and that doesn't work either. He realizes he needs to study Hit's moves, and he does. He realizes how to defend against Hit, and he goes at it with the plan. Hit stands no chance now. Vegeta is just casually dodging and blocking every punch Hit throws at him. Even time skip doesn't work anymore, as Vegeta blocks the blow. Vegeta then disappears and reappears next to him, elbowing him right in his jaw, making him fly outside the battleground boundaries and losing. Vegeta won for all of them and they were about to go celebrate, but Zeno appeared and was mad because he wasn't invited and all that. Goku does his usual Gokuing and manages to make Zeno his friend, while the gods look in on horror, seeing a mortal Saiyan with the king of all. 
Zeno and Goku agree to do a big tournament in the future, and with that, Zeno disappears. Goku doesn't get the onset delayed key disorder in the tournament because he hasn't used his Kaioken at all, and Vegeta won for the sake of their universe. At this point, Beerus summons the Super Dragon Balls after hassling around the location of the last Dragon Ball and they wish for Champa a nice copy of Earth for Champa to enjoy. After that, they all get back to their normal Saiyan drives. However, in an alternate timeline, we see Trunks running from something which is causing destruction all over the place. Trunks then hides along with future Boma. Just as they're about to depart into the past, that someone barges in and kills Boma. Trunks does the best he can to escape, and he does. Trunks manages to escape into Capsule Corp and fire up the machine. Black noticed him in it and tried to attack him, but Trunks is long gone. Back in the present, we see Goku being forced to farm by Chi Chi, as he calls up Piccolo to harvest and all. Back at Capsule Corp, the time machine appears as his future Trunks. Present Trunks is weirded out by this, and Boma went to look on for something the second she saw him. She called Goku, who escaped the field to train with Whis using the communicator, and they get there. Future Trunks gets the Sensu, and with that, he attacks Goku for no obvious reason. He then apologizes and gets to the story. He talks about how there's a person that is tearing down the planet, and to top it all off, he looks just like Goku. That was quickly backed up when Goku Black enters the present timeline through a rift. Goku immediately went to him, well to fight him of course. This part goes as in the original, so the time machine is destroyed. Vegeta is just like what the hell and wants to take him on himself. All while that's happening, Beerus and Whis have noticed a time ring on Black's index finger. They then tell everyone how time travel is forbidden and how they can get destroyed for tampering with time as it's only allowed to flow in only one direction. And they're scared now, but Beerus says he can forgive if he can get some good food and so he gets those sausages. Bulma then remembers the old time machine and goes to find it so she can repair it. All while that's happening, Trunks decides to fight Goku to see how well he stands against him and so, Goku goes Super Saiyan 3 and fights Trunks for a bit, before knocking him out. Goku and Vegeta then go train for a bit, so that they can have a better chance against Black. The time machine is done, and they go back in the future. In an alternate timeline, they go and feed the survivors and all that, as well as Mai, and they then go and announce their return. Black is there instantaneously. Vegeta then goes Super Saiyan Rose and rushes Black. He's having a little bit of trouble at first, but then knocks Vegeta down. Black then transforms into Super Saiyan Rose himself. But before he can dispose of the prince, Zamasu arrives, saying he should be the one taking at least one of them down. Black is triggered, but agrees to fight Vegeta, while Zamasu is gonna take on Goku. Goku thinks maybe this version of himself was jealous of Vegeta being a literal deity. He asks Black what has Vegeta done to him to hate him so much here in the past. Black said that has nothing to do with Vegeta, but with mortals and how they should be extinguished. This completely confused Goku, and this was also the right time for him to figure out Zamasu is immortal. Vegeta is having trouble with Black as well. Not only they both have same forms, but Black is plenty stronger than Super Saiyan Rose 2 Vegeta. So Vegeta got pwned, and they had to swallow their pride and return to the present. In the present timeline, Goku, Beerus and Whis decide to investigate Black's appearance back then, as well as the time ring and, well, Goku says, being a deity as well. They go to Universe 10 and consult with Gosu as well as Amasu. At first glance, Goku recognizes Amasu and almost says how he joined Black as well, but Beerus throws him in the air. Goku then feels the Kai's key and realizes it's not only Divine Key, it's quite similar to Black's. They figure out Zamasu has weird intentions, but can't quite connect the dots that easily. Goku decides to fight the Kai in training, and it's quite obvious to him his key is really similar to Black's. He also senses a bit of menace from him as well, something Goku couldn't really do in canon. Beerus also takes notice of it. Once they finish, the three then leave. 
Goku says there must be a way Black and Zamasu are connected. He also says he felt a menacing key from Zamasu and Beerus says the same. Once Goku floored Zamasu, the hatred came out basically. We says that they should keep it low key and wait for an opportunity to catch Zamasu in the act, theorizing about him using the Dragon Balls to wish for Goku to have the same mindset as himself, considering Black indirectly said Black hates mortals. Whis also theorizes about a body swap, but they keep that under the carpet until they're sure. Vegeta and Goku then go off the train with Whis in the time chamber. They are in there for a whole 6 months, maybe even longer, and they get plenty stronger. Goku and Vegeta both tap into something they misunderstood really bad. So now they have hope in defeating Black and getting the correct answer before all. So with that, they go back in the future. Once the Saiyans arrive in the future, Vegeta whips out Ultra Instinct, as well as Goku, both of which have figured out how to access it at will back in the time chamber, and they rush at the two haters. Trunks is hella confused as to what the two Saiyan comrades of his have tapped into. Vegeta knocks out Black and kills him in a matter of seconds, adding times 10 to Trunks' confusion. However, Zamasu is a bit harder to take down as he wished to be mortal. It takes a while and Zamasu is getting frustrated. He starts launching key attacks at Goku, but Goku has to finish it quick. So he starts preparing a massive Kamehameha, gets under Zamasu, and fires the wave at him, seemingly disintegrating him. However, that's not the end, as Zamasu starts to spread throughout the universe. Zamasu says his counterpart took Goku's mortal body to get rid of mortals, so now he has to finish the zero mortal plan. They now have no chance, no matter how hard they try. Goku then recalls Zeno and his conversations with him and how he is unbeatable and stuff. Goku then asks Zamasu what gods remain in this multiverse and Zamasu replies to Shinkan and Zeno. Goku grins and tells Zamasu that he's about to get erased while pulling out the Zeno button he got from Zeno a while back and presses it to summon Zeno to his location. Zamasu calls Goku out on the bluff, but before he can finish the sentence, Zamasu is seen sweating bullets as he looks at Zeno. With Zeno there, Goku asks of him to destroy Zamasu and destroy he did. They manage to return to the present just in time. Once that happened, they go back in the future timeline and see nothing but Zeno. They take future Zeno and bring him to present Zeno to play with. With that, future Trunks goes into a similar timeline and Zamasu is destroyed by Beerus too, once they put the pieces together with the help of Goku telling them everything. Vegeta went to Goku, saying the smug look on his face he had a while back he'd never seen before. Goku says he just got into his character, with Vegeta asking him that's a new character trait of his. They both share a big laugh, having a little friendly push session and then go and train to perfect their ultra instinct. After a little bit, Goku wonders about the tournament Zeno is supposed to hold and Beerus is annoyed because of Goku's foolish nature. Goku presses the Zeno button and goes to Zeno's palace since there's two of them now, asking about the tournament. The two jelly bean looking kids get all happy and start organizing the tournament with Ashinkan. Goku, happy as hell, goes back and gets a smack on the head by Beerus. They then go to Kaioshin Realm and once they do, Daishinkan arrives and explains the rules for the Tournament of Power. They're all really scared now when they heard about getting erased from existence if they lose. With that, they need participants for the tournament. But first, the Zeno Expo is happening. Nappa, Raditz and Goku go out to battle the Trio of Danger in that order. They pretty much do the same as in the original, nothing too special here. Tapo fights Goku and Tapo gets a rough estimate of Goku's power, saying Jiren will put his ass on the ground. With that, Universe 7 is victorious and they go search for contestants. There's only one problem, Vegeta is not going, he has a kid on the way. But Whis fixes that very quickly and very easily, using his staff to warp time, delivering newborn Bola. Vegeta is now in, now for the rest of the warriors. They pretty much appoint everyone as in the original. The only difference is that Raditz takes Frieza's place and Nappa takes Tien's place. So we have 
Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, Nappa, Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin, Roshi, and Android 17 and 18. The fight with Universe 9 Assassins still happens. With that, the 10 warriors are ready to rumble. Thankfully, the hand holding goes a lot more better than in canon. They get teleported to the tournament arena and they wait there. Goku meets the rest of the Universe 6 Saiyan lineup, but gets brushed off by Cauliflower. And then, the main course comes in, as it's Universe 11. Well, Jiren in particular. Goku has never sensed power so strong before, and goes to meet with Jiren. But Jiren tells him to screw off if he values his life. Goku then goes to greet Tapo, but Jiren gets behind Goku, telling him yet again to go away if he wants to stay alive. Goku then backs away when Kachi Kachin blocks flies away. Goku sees how Jiren didn't even budge when these flied his way, but Vegeta saw that he managed to move his blocks away from him with a little bit of key pressure exerted. He knew this battle is gonna be a really tough one if Jiren is as strong as Vegeta thinks he is. With that, the ring is repaired and the tournament starts. Goku splits from the team and many others also say fuck you to Gohan and his strategies and go on their own. The fights go as in the original, except one thing. Universe 2 gets eliminated first for unexplainable reasons by Universe 9. From that point on, everything goes as in the original until they eliminate Universe 9 and realize Universe 9 got erased for real. That got them in a more serious mindset then and there, simply because they didn't quite believe Universe 2 got erased. In the first 5 minutes, most of the competitors from various universes were eliminated. Goku and Kalifa start fighting and Kale is just standing there, feeling like shit as she goes berserk at Goku, knocking various other competitors out as well. Goku pushes all the way to Super Saiyan Blue and even then he's easily overpowered. Goku then goes Ultra Instinct and disposes of Kale very quickly telling Kalifla to make Kale take control of that power as she's pretty much on par with him. Jiren was relieved of the trouble, but also interested in that power up. Goku is now about to take on Jiren, but Taupo intervenes, giving them time to retreat while the other pride troopers fight Goku. Goku decides to not strain himself with Ultra Instinct and just take them on in Super Saiyan. Meanwhile, Vegeta is manhandling Brienne. He's very disappointed in the form as to how it looks, but likes the display of power. Back with Goku, he's now trying to get to Jiren, using whatnot to get some kind of an advantage, but to no avail. Even with his Kaioken x20 and Super Saiyan Blue combo, he stands no chance. So he goes into his Ultra Instinct and displays the power gods are amazed by. However, Vegeta isn't too proud of that, as he knows he can't use it for long, as he doesn't have much mind control over it, so he keeps it for emergencies only. Jiren, even though he's getting a bit sweaty, decides to end it in one blow and so, Goku is down. Vegeta now has to step in and goes Ultra Instinct to test his power and with that goes and attacks Jiren. His great power startles Jiren as he uses all of his power, but they're seemingly equal. Jiren is intimidated and holds his rant about his past and Vegeta holds a speech how he has a family waiting for him back on earth. How he has friends to protect and family to cherish. Jiren gets triggered and fires a giant blast at the bleachers. Vegeta gets pissed and almost goes out of Ultra Instinct, but keeps it under check at the very last second. Meanwhile, Goku is taking on Kalfa and Kale again. He's pushed the Super Saiyan God and of course they fuse into Kefla. Goku knows he doesn't stand a chance due to rapid power up from the fusion. So he goes straight to Ultra Instinct and picks them apart like in the original. Goku then takes on Tapo to settle the weird rivalry. Vegeta in this meantime is picking Jiren apart, even with his Ultra Instinct, and Jiren is back into a corner. Vegeta tells him how the thing he tried to destroy just a minute ago is what pushed him and to never forget it. With that, Vegeta rushes behind Jiren, kicked him high in the air, then teleports above him, giving him a hard sledgehammer away from the arena, eliminating him. With that, there's only a few participants left to defeat, and with the defeat of them, they win the tournament. They wish for all the universes to be restored, and leave the tournament grounds. 
Meanwhile, in Capsule Corp, a Dragon Radar and six Dragon Balls were stolen by none other than that few people that were left in the Frieza Force. And as they go search for the last Dragon Ball, Bulma figures out that her place has been ransacked by Frieza's goons. So she goes investigating. They summon the dragon, revive Frieza as fast as they can, and they flee in a spaceship. Bulma comes in late to the party and calls up Trunks, cause shit is about to go down. Our heroes are back and they just got back to Earth and Bulma then calls them saying that Frieza got revived and knowing him he's up to no good. Vegeta knows they're fucked and they get a new motivation to train yet again. While Frieza is training to get stronger, our squad is training rigorously. Goku even went as far as speaking with Kaioshin as he's heard a lot of stories about the Yard Rats. So he goes there and spends about the next 3 months learning instant transmission and key manipulation, as well as a few other neat tricks. Vegeta is trying to get a hold of his Ultra Instinct form, perfecting it. 10 months have passed since they started training and they get a call from Jocko, saying Frieza is alive yet again and is trying to go for Namek again. So our squad goes and teleports to Namek with the help of Goku. They discuss this Frieza thing and at that exact moment, Frieza arrives and literally destroys the ship, swearing if he loses this time, he will destroy everything and everyone, having a backup plan that he will ditch into space since he can live without an atmosphere. We know that ain't gonna happen as all of the Z fighters are already there. Vegeta goes straight to Super Saiyan Rose 2 and pushes it further to Super Saiyan Rose 3 and kicks Frieza in the neck. Frieza is quite untouched by it, but goes into his golden form and continues the battle. Vegeta is still a whole lot stronger and has stamina, so he's not running out of energy anytime soon. Frieza is being pummeled left and right, but keeps confident. Getting a bit of distance, Frieza starts powering up into a higher level as his skin turns from golden to more of a blue appearance. He has transformed into Diamond Frieza and his power now actually surpasses Vegeta by dozens if not hundreds of times. Vegeta gets to his senses, sensing Frieza's power and just stands there. Frieza is now the one who's throwing Vegeta around the whole place and Vegeta even though confident in his diagnosis, he still kinda doubts it. The battle is fierce and Vegeta is losing energy and is hurt quite a bit. He knew if he doesn't do something fast, he will die and the Rosé is pretty much the same strength for him as Ultra Instinct, as the Instinct is not fully mastered. Frieza then reached his peak power, and it's decreasing as he is going to land a punch on Vegeta. Fortunately, Vegeta just takes a punch. Explaining why coming to Earth right after getting a form was a really bad idea. Frieza is stubborn and doesn't believe it, so Vegeta lets out a smirk, as he says this form has a fourth revision he never knew existed. He then proceeded to power up, as his hair started ingrowing and his power skyrocketed. He comes out with black hair and pink swirly bangs. Vegeta then blasts Frieza away with no remorse whatsoever. Frieza was nowhere to be seen and Vegeta falls down on the ground, straight from the form itself. Vegeta learned one thing, which he was kinda struggling with, and that is the energy control for his new form, but only for brief moments and with extreme difficulty. With that, our Z fighters have gotten rid of Frieza and he's back in his hell, rotting away with plushies and other cute shit. The problems aren't quite over yet as two Saiyans come out of the ship. The names are of course Paragus and Broly, as Paragus commands Broly to fight Vegeta and even though it goes similar to canon, we don't really get a Super Saiyan Broly. All of a sudden, damn, what the hell happened here? What? Uh, what? Come on, get your shit together. If you wanna stay, stay you old hag. Vegeta's done nothing wrong so why come after him? Paragus proceeds to attack Michael. But Michael simply makes an afterimage through which Paragus passes. Michael then creates an energy vapor, which calms the two Saiyans down. As for you, Vegeta, mind talking for a little? Is Trunks okay? I mean, back there, in the future? Other me? I have no idea on what kind of weed you're on. I'm not you. Then? My name is Michael. I'm looking for Vegeta scattered across timelines. As a Saiyan God, I can invite you, if you're up for it. Any prizes? Nothing in particular, but the winner gets the title of the real Saiyan King. Sign me the 
Fuck up. Wanna spar first? See where you're at? Alright, you knock off. Let's throw it on. The two began a fight. Both of them were in base. Michael told him to go full power as to not skip any warmups. Might have been a small mistake as Michael had to use Super Saiyan, then Super Saiyan Evolution, and only then he had a little chance. But it wasn't it. Vegeta still had his reserve of power. Michael was pushed to true Super Saiyan. Now the fight got interesting. Vegeta tried his best at this point, but after roughly 15 minutes, he lost all energy he had. One tip. You're exerting way too much energy outside your body and around your body to keep that transformation up. You gotta make it more reliable, not stronger. In any case, I'm gonna pick you up when it's time. Start training. I have more Vegetas to call.